All right, here's a glimpse of how my brain works. I'll look at my truck. Oh, and then my eyes will land on the old hat here. And then my brain will be like, huh, I wonder if I could fit all giant eight hat tires onto the rear axle of my truck. And then it turns into being like, oh, I could do that, but should I do that? But then that always ends up in a yes, because that's how you make life fun. You do things that you know, maybe you shouldn't. Now, how do I do this? Well, I definitely want the inside tire to be offset in, but right now it'll definitely hit the leaf spring. So I think I'm going to narrow up my frame a little bit and run these leaf springs in on the axle a little bit so that the first tire can face inwards and have a deep offset in because we're already going to have so much tire sticking out. Might as well get that first one in as far as possible. I've already removed my rear fuel tank. Next, I need my front fuel tank to go because we're going to run out of space for all that stuff when we narrow up the frame. Now you're wondering, oh, how are you going to have fuel in the truck? Well, check it out. I already made this little two gallon canister thing here. So that's plumbed into the engine now. It's not like this truck is going to drive more than it can burn two gallons because it has no head gasket or coolant or I don't even know if it has oil anymore. But for some reason it still runs, which is why we are doing this now. Certainly loading that much tire for the engine to drive is going to kill it. Hopefully. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm hoping for. Because this engine won't die. <laughs> Here's the first tire I mocked up. This is already looking pretty funny. All of a sudden my 38 inch tire on the front looks tiny compared to the 54 inch in the rear. These tires are 54 inches by two feet wide. So they are behemoths. So it already looks funny with one. Can't imagine three more and then four more on the other side. Now we are dealing with what I was expecting. We're up against the leaf spring with it right now. And we're still like seven inches from the mounting surface. So I need to bring the frame in at least seven inches on either side. All right, we're gonna keep narrowing this frame super simple. I'm just gonna take this pipe. I've got this stencil of scrap metal that's gonna guide my plasma torch for a perfect hole. I'll cut another perfect hole there and we'll chop the rest of the frame out. And I'll chop a section out of the cross members and this whole back section is just going to squeeze together a little bit. So the tube on this half will be welded to this frame. And then on the other half will be welded to the back section of the frame right there. So the frame will just go eh, 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 and on back. I'm going to pull an all-nighter getting this truck ready for tomorrow so we can get this video filmed. So we're all about quick and effective tonight. Now that that tube is welded on the half to the main frame, now I can go through and chop down all my cross members. I already have my lines marked. So I'll chop there, bring the cross member together and butt weld it. Here's a homemade gooseneck case that was put on this truck before me. Literally just a welded nut down in there that you thread your ball into, but it's not super strong. It's hardly welded to the frame. So we're just gonna hack it off and get rid of it. So it won't be in the system anymore. So chop there, chop there, chop there. One more thing I have to do is cut these shock brackets because the leaf spring is going to want to ride right there. So this side of the shock bracket will need to go. I'll plasma it off and then sand it smooth with the angle grinder. So I'm leaving this yellow tube in place for now while I chop all these because then this will act as a cross member and help keep things from completely just collapsing while I go through and cut things. All right, now I'm gonna take the concrete saw that has a metal cutting wheel on it and use that to chop my lines because that'll be a nice, clean, straight cut. It'll be cleaner for welding and it'll be straighter than I can get it with uh, the plasma torch. So let's buzz through it. All 
Alrighty, all those cross members are cut. I'm leaving my hitch plate still barely connected, just because I think when I undo that, it's gonna try to fold in everything. So I think I'm gonna tackle unbolting the axle now. I'm trying to keep control of this frame once it gets into two pieces. About time for the final cuts. I'm gonna cut the rest of the way of this hitch off with the plasma cutter. Cause I'm too scared of the concrete saw when this frame torques that it bites my cutting wheel and then explodes and kills me. So plasma torch will be a lot more, a lot safer in my eyes. So I'm gonna go that route. And we'll also use the plasma torch up here just to and then but below that too. And then from there, we'll have two loosey-goosey frame halves that hopefully I can get back together straight. And they'll want to weld back together and everything will line up good enough. I'm pretty tired, but hopefully I got all those dimensions right. So now let's send it to the plasma cutter and go cut it out. Alrighty, I have my half inch plate. This bolt pattern will be for bolts into the truck. And I have these four holes for the all thread. Wait, have I told you guys about the all thread yet? Because yeah, I'm literally planning on using all this all thread I bought to just clamp the set of tires together. I'm just relying on the friction of the rubber sidewalls to hold everything center. Should work, right? Right? I don't know. That was the easiest option, easiest, cheapest, and quickest option I could come up with. And we'll find out tomorrow if it'll work or not. Or if these tires will get all oblong and out of center and it's going to be a wild ride then. So stay tuned. Remember, quick and dirty tonight, okay? That's the goal. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty and functional. All right, the first two are mounted on solid. You got good clearance between it and the leaf spring. And the offset actually like perfectly matches the front tire, which is funny. Oh, by the way, we did make it to sunrise. Anyways, it's 6.30 a.m. right now. I think we'll try to get a little nap, then come back out, pull the rest of the tires off the hat, and then my friends will get here, and they'll help me put the rest of these tires on. Because it's probably gonna take as many hands on deck to like perfectly wiggle all, all these where they need to be so that all the lug holes line up and then they're all center as well so that should be interesting hopefully that's not too time consuming so all right i'll be back in like an hour
should stop. We're at a lower height here than over there, so physics should not run. I don't think it'll roll over here. Hopefully, it's probably not going to go as planned, but we're trying to get them just gracefully roll down these ramps. We thought about just flopping them off the side with no ramps, but probably too high of a likelihood of just snapping the axle. So we're trying to preserve the axle a little bit longer. Not till the end of the day. <laughs> 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 All right. Hunter's prediction was correct. Now my plan is I'll just drive the army truck backwards with the crane cantilevered over and it should just back right straight parallel right off the trailer. We have good luck so far. Everything's going great so far. Got a little bit of flex going on over here. Oh, it's a lot of flex. It's a concerning amount of flex. Oh man, you think we'll make it to the big puddles? I think we, I think you could do it. Let's see if the clutch will even get this thing started. <laughs> Back there. Ah! <laughs> 
The frame wheel is just enough to pump the scrub shop up. Oh, uh, we ripped our U bolts. I'm just kidding. Yeah, lad. Snap those suckers clean. Truck lives to see another day. What's the plan, Hunter? Uh, my frame has bent 90 degrees thus far. 90 right there. We're getting dangerously close to my cab. If anything happens with my cab, I'll be sad. I don't care about anything else about the truck. Just gonna drive off and see what happens. Hopefully, it's in a pilot break. I just want to dangle it from the crane and bounce it up and down until something snaps. One pesky you pull. Three of them snap like nothing while we're driving. This one will pick it up. <laughs> His axle is literally still fine. Still rotates smoothly. Only thing that happened is we broke this yoke. So I'm gonna just weld on a plate and then bolt this U-joint to it and then weld this to the rest of my drive shaft and it'll be really hooky, but it'll work. 